Baking AMIs with Jenkins. You may wonder why should you use Jenkins to bake AMIs? Sometimes when you want to do more than just install a Debian package, it can be high maintenance to maintain the Packer build script in Rosco on Spinnaker. Because if you want to change something, it involves a redeploy of Spinnaker, and that's something you don't want to do every time you want to change the Packer script. Sometimes you're already building custom AMIs and releasing them with tools like Terraform. So when that custom AMI is in place, so it's just easier to build AMIs over in your CI solution like Jenkins or Travis CI or Circle CI, and just plug that into Spinnaker instead of moving everything to Spinnaker. In this lecture, we'll be configuring Jenkins to do this. I'm going to install a Packer plugin. I'm going to create a Jenkins job to build an AMI. And then we're going to configure Spinnaker. And then I'm going to show you how to build a deploy pipeline using custom AMIs to AWS. All right, let's start with installing the Packer plugin in Jenkins. So first up, let's go to Manage Jenkins. Manage Plugins. Available. And search for Packer. Here's Packer. Download now and install after restart. Restart Jenkins when installation is complete. Now it's restarting Jenkins. Once this is done, Packer is installed on the Jenkins machine and we can start configuring it. Now Jenkins is restarted. Let me log in. Let's check if the plugin is installed correctly. Manage Jenkins. Then we go to Global Tool Configuration. And then we see Packer is not in here yet, so let's head back to Manage Plugins. So now let's activate Packer. So I'm going to go to Installed, Packer, Restart once no jobs are running. After this restart, Packer will be enabled. So let me log in one more time. Now let's check if it's installed correctly. Manage Jenkins, Global Tool Configuration. Now we're going to add a Packer installation. So let's give it a name. Packer 1.2.2. Packer template text, we're going to leave it empty because we're going to define it in our Jenkins job and we're going to add additional parameters. These are the parameters needed to be able to communicate with the Amazon API. So this is your access key and your secret access key. So now let's add an installer. Let's select a version. This one for our DigitalOcean machine. Darwin is Mac, FreeBSD we're not running, so we need Linux AMD 64. Okay. This all looks good. Let's save this. Now let's create a new job. We're going to name it Build AMI. Freestyle project. OK. Now I'm going to add a post build action packer. Select that one. I'm going to use the packer template text. Let me copy paste this. So this is from our show notes. What you can see here is that we're going to spin up a Ubuntu machine. And then the most interesting part about this is that he's going to use a provisioner type shell. This can even be Ansible or Chef or whatever configuration tool you use. Packer has a lot of support for the configuration tools. So, and in this script, we're just doing an update and installing Nginx. I'm going to add another build, post build action. I'm going to archive the artifacts. So in this post processor, we're uh, outputting a manifest.json. In our next job in Spinnaker, we're going to parse this manifest.json and then extract the AMI ID that he just created out of it. And we're going to archive star.json. 
this job needs to go behind um, the Packer build. So let's save this and let's run it to see if everything is working correctly. If you click on this bar, you can follow the output. So let's follow it. As you can see here, he installed Nginx. So this is pretty great. So now he's stopping the AMI. He's now shutting down the EC2 machine to create an AMI out of it. All right, now the AMI was created with this AMI ID and the any archived the artifacts. Let's check it out. Here is the manifest.json. As you can see here, this file provides the info necessary for Spinnaker to actually be able to deploy this. So we're gonna parse this out later, but no worries, I'm gonna show you how. Now let's head over to Spinnaker. So in Spinnaker, let's go to pipelines. I created a new pipeline called Jenkins Bake. So in this pipeline, there's a load balancer attached. So let's check it out, load balancers. Got this load balancer. We're gonna click on demo app and then we're gonna edit it. As you can see here, I already edited it, but it's basically adding a new target group on port 80, like here above, with a health check on port 80 as well, slash. So we already did that in the previous lecture, so I'm not gonna go into that much further. So, and then we created a listener as well as port 80, but that's the same one we already had, but it forwards to a different target group. So basically um, what else you would need to do is to update the security groups because um, our previous demo app worked at port 3000. Now that port has changed to 80. So we're gonna go to security groups. Um, as you can see here, we got the demo app EC2 and the demo app ALB. So let's check it out. So the demo app has this one. So the demo app EC2. We're gonna check these out. We're gonna edit the inbound rules. And as you can see, we allow traffic from the demo app ALB, so the load balancer, to this application. So it inherits this security group. So it's able to allow communication from the ALB. Now let's check out the pipeline and we're gonna create a new one. So create, I'm gonna call this Jenkins AMI bake. I'm gonna create it. I'm gonna leave the automatic triggers out of it. I'm gonna add a stage, type is Jenkins. doesn't depend on anything, my Jenkins master. Now we're gonna select our job, build AMI. And the properties file is that manifest.json. Like, is this file. If stage failed, halt the entire process. Yep, that looks correctly. And let's save changes. So, now we got a Jenkins stage that will look for this build and extract the manifest.json out of it. So let's add another stage. I'm gonna do a type deploy, depends on Jenkins. I'm gonna add the server group, the demo app secure uh, server group, is this template. Yep, this all is correct. We're gonna do red and black. Security group are also correct. Micro to speed things up. Capacity all looks great. Great. Cool down also looks great. And let's add this. Okay, now we've created our pipeline. Let's press save changes. But first, before we're gonna run this pipeline, let's edit the state as JSON. And we're gonna enter the AMI name here. So I'm gonna copy paste this from our show notes. And this actually extracts the AMI name out of that manifest.json. So 
going to update the stage. Now we're going to save it again. Let's head over to the pipeline. We close this, we're in this, and let's start manual execution and run. So let's check the build AMI job here. As you can see, he triggered the job. So when this is finished, this build, he's going to pass the manifest.json to the next job, which is the deploy. And then he's going to deploy our AMI with the default Nginx inside of it to AWS. So I'm going to fast forward the video here and then we'll see the end result soon. So right, the AMI is ready. It's now just terminating the AWS instance where the snapshot and AMI is created from. So that's successful. He archived the artifacts, the manifest.json. That normally now gets passed to Spinnaker. So let's check out the pipeline. So and here you see he's deploying. Gonna do a red black deploy, which Wart explained in the previous lectures about deployment strategies. Let's check it out and wait for a bit for it to finish. And as you can see here, the deployment just finished successfully. So let's click demo app here. And we see that everything is healthy, so that's good. And we go to load balancers, use east, click on the DNS name here. And there you go, we just installed Nginx. So now I hope you understand what you can do with building AMIs outside of Spinnaker. This gives you a lot of flexibility and you're not tied into one tool like Spinnaker because the possibilities, like I explained in the beginning, are pretty limited. You can install Debian packages can customize the templates however but that always requires like a Roscoe deploy and that seems like a little bit overhead for me now you know how to do this so good luck and thank you